Who are you sorry? Because I screamed into the mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Ship Across the Border. My name is Max. I'm here with Chris. And today we have on Luciando. Starting. What's his last name? What's with? his last name? I don't know. And his name is in Luin Luciano. <laughs> <laughs> we have on Lucy. What position are you in the court? Uh, I play attack. Men's lacrosse, attack, forward. 17 goals in the season in five games. Best lacrosse player in Adam's history. I wouldn't say Even that. Even though we've only had one season. <laughs> He's actually currently the leading scorer with 17 goals, so he might be the best player to ever play here. You know what's crazy? This actually made me like, this kind of fucked up with my head. I had like just met you first week of school, and we were, I was like walking through... Um, McGuire and I was like looking at like the wall and shit. I was about to say that shit. And like the first week, I look up and it's like, yo, you're already on the fucking wall. It's been one week. Yeah, then he's on, on the wall. wall. Yeah. For I don't, what? I, uh, so there was How do you even have that picture? You ain't even played lacrosse. So yet. there was a prospect day that a few I think it was so it was a few of our teammates were here. They did a little prospect day. Uh they took some pictures and they were like this kid looks like the ghost. I didn't know they were going to put my picture really on it. a looking mustache. <laughs> I didn't know they were going to put my picture on there and they just put my picture on it. I was like, oh, "Okay, cool." So what are your thoughts on Wow. That's good, that's so, <laughs> that was going to be an opening line, and I thought of the other thing. You guys are going to have no idea what I just said. but That's big cut. Um, yeah. Honestly, I'm going to go with the classic question because I can't think of anything else. How the fuck did you... Actually, no, fuck that. Fuck all that extra shit. Where did you grow up? Where, did you, where were you born? I was born in Troy, New York, but I grew up... I was about up. to say Toronto. I was about to say, no fucking way. Troy, New York is where? It's... An, it's where high school musical takes place. <laughs> I don't know about that, but it, not actually. <laughs> it's it's like an hour away from like the western part of Massachusetts, okay. so it was like an hour away from where I was from. Mm-hmm. Did you grow up on so a farm? You were an hour away from the hour away. Yes, I was an hour away from the hour. <laughs> away. If you want, if you want to say like that, yes, yes, okay. I was. Uh, did you grow up on a farm? Did you grow up in the city? Where you I grew up. You're in the only this... one that grew up on a fucking farm. <laughs> That's not true. I grew up Washington. in the. I grew up on like a lake, and then I, I've. I mean, I've moved roughly twelve like, times in the middle of it. Like you just used to float around and shit, or <laughs> like, like Lake. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was a little bit of the house. Being being dickheads, we gotta actually focus. <laughs> Did he move twelve times? What? Yeah, I'm like, moving a thirteenth time. To just time different now. parts of the lake. <laughs> yes, yes. I moved from You're rotating. <laughs> <laughs> I was rotating during a storm. I was getting ticked. Oh my goodness! No, but yeah, I moved. <laughs> this is a great start. We have four. We have three other guests coming on this week that are really high level guests. So we need to be serious. that are way cooler than Lucci. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. So we go. We got to start Yo, off on the right. Focus point. up, bro. <laughs> okay, you moved twelve times. Yeah, just in the state of New York. Uh, so I moved from New York to Pittsfield, and I moved a bunch of times. Then I moved back. Then I moved to Dolan, where I currently am now. Wait. So when you? Holy fuck. Are you changing schools like twelve times? Uh, no, I just moved to different houses in the, around in the neighborhood, in the, in the neighborhood around the city. And how many times like are you the new kid at school? Like how many years in a row or in a general? I was so just probably Okona. One time. One time, yeah. Okay. Well, it was Nessa against the middle school, and then then so, seventh grade. So you so, you move close enough in proximity to the school where yeah. you stay. Well, why? I mean, it might be personal, so you don't. I guess have to say, but why? You, why you keep moving? Why you just. Keep so first time was parents getting divorced, stepdad, mom getting divorced, so they moved. Um, but then they got back together. We moved to um, Dalton, and then we came back, and then they got divorced again, mm-hmm. and then we had to, then we just moved away. That went from being really silly to really deep, really fast. Really yeah, fast. I was not expecting yeah. that. Um, wow, Jesus Christ. How does that affect you as a kid? This is a very well, deep, basically going from like goofy as fuck to deep as fuck, but I'm ready to go there. Well, yeah. So I mean, I've never really had a father figure in my life. My dad left when I was five, went to you know do drugs in the streets, have is that sex. Sarcasm with or is that no? I'm being 100 serious. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> you, Chris. <laughs> That's a weird turn, but I kinda, I'll be obviously it's terrible to have it too. But this is what do you call it? This could, we could get some some valuable um, content, like I've, some lessons out of this. I've never. I mean, I don't. I haven't experienced divorce, so I want to know. Like, so how old were you when they got the first divorce first time? So my well, my parents were never uh, married. They were never married. No. So they had you. So they had me accidentally. Then four and a half. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, you're an accident. accident. Yeah. I know people who were accidents. You know what's crazy? I'm going to completely sidetrack here and we we'll go back to a story. But one of my best friends back in Aiton, Ontario, Andover, he, his parents were, uh, his dad was 62 and his mom was 58 and she had her tubes tied and he had his nuts snipped and he was born after that happened. Damn. So he was the biggest mistake of all time and he just slipped through the cracks. Damn. <laughs> Anyways, back to your story. <laughs> Slips through the cracks. Um, so you were how old again? Sorry, I just please. So I was four out. and a half. Um, my dad and mom had accidentally had my sister as well and there's a bunch of sides to their story. I don't know which one is actually true, mm-hmm. but 
Yeah, so I never really had a father figure growing up until I met my stepdad. Stepdad was okay, but he was a drunk, so that didn't really help. Wow. So then, they, so then your mom and stepdad got divorced? Yeah, so they got together when I moved, when I was still in Pittsfield. Then we moved to Dalton. Then they got divorced. Then we moved closer. And then, yeah. So how does that affect you as a kid, like growing up and seeing other people who don't have dad, or you have, you, they have dads and you don't have dads, and like you, you compare? I always, you, I always like, I always saw. You, can, my, you only have to talk about what you're comfortable no, with, I'm and we fine, can cut anything. I'm just, fine. just. He's joking about his dad doing drugs and fucking hookers. I don't think. Really I don't think worry. he joked. I think. I was no, I was being serious about that, but my. Seeing other kids, I was like, it was hard going through that, seeing other kids have families and, like, a mom and dad. I, I saw my dad. I would I used to see him every Thursday and every Sunday. Then it changed to every Sunday. But, yeah, it was it was very hard going through not having a dad or, like, a role model to actually help pick me up. Mm-hmm. And then my aunt met her boyfriend, who they broke up, and that's he introduced me to the cross. And okay, so, I mean, that's a pretty good segue. How old, how old were you when you started playing the cross? I was seven when I started playing. And your mother's ex-boyfriend introduced you to mother's it? Mother's sister's. Ex- aunt's, aunt's, aunt's boyfriend. Sorry. Um, how did he introduce you to it? So I was playing baseball, and I'd never heard of lacrosse ever. And somehow I wanted to play. I don't remember exactly what happened, but then he brought a lacrosse stick for me and like said he would pay for my stuff to play because – I said I wanted to try it out because I was getting sick of baseball. S- hate baseball. It's baseball. such such a slow sport. But at this age, you were seven. Yeah, so and I was still thinking it was slow. <laughs> I was I was playing a good amount of baseball. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, then he then I started playing lacrosse, and it's been like the light of my life ever since. Mm. Um, before we kind of exit this topic, I think it's good. To just how do you kind of use the motivation of what's going on in your personal life, or maybe what's have gone on in your personal life to succeed in what are you doing now? And is it motivation or is it just like, fuck, I can't believe that happened. I'm just going to leave that in the back burner and not think about it. So during COVID, I ended up finding religion helpful. Okay. And that's just been my motivation through everything. I was like, God can give me nothing I can't handle. So anything I do is just going to, he's going to help me through it no matter what. And that's just I've given me motivation through all the things that I've done mm-hmm. have happened to me. Okay. So okay. you start playing lacrosse at seven years old. Wait, before we do that, were you, so you, you played, when did you start playing baseball? Like early, must be early, two years old. Uh, yeah, I, was, I think I was, I think my dad would be out in the backyard. I'd be hitting tee balls since like mm. one, one or two. That's a nice childhood memory. Yeah. When well, he was around. I don't remember it, but, oh. you know. He had to tell you it. I think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then you made the switch to lacrosse mm-hmm. and naturally gifted. Did you suck? Were you like? I wasn't always the best player on the team. I was always definitely average um, till I actually... Just started playing the sport nonstop, then I realized, okay, I might actually be pretty good at the sport. And I just kept playing it, kept playing it, and I just kept getting better did every single sh- day. Did you start as an attack? I started as midi, then I moved to attack, I think, before uh, two years before I moved to uh, Dalton. Mm. So like, when you say you got better, like you just start, like you made this mental switch, so like, yo, I'm going to start putting in extra hours, or just uh, be not, playing the game? I just... Fell in love with it, and it just helped me, like, play more and, like, have an open mind about the sport. It's just a lot more fun than the sports I've played before, and I just want to keep playing as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And then you're going through middle school, and how are you, like, traversing through this middle school situation with lacrosse and without a father and all this stuff? Middle school was tough, but I just just pushed through. Middle school was kind of a blur now. Why was it tough? The school I went to wasn't the best. The teachers weren't great. I mean, I was friends with all the popular kids, so they made my life a lot easier. I didn't have to get bullied or anything. I've actually never really been bullied, mm-hmm. which was pretty cool. But, yeah, being friends with all of them it helped me through everything. So, like, I was always a sports kid. I wasn't always the most popular kid on the sport. I was always, like, probably lower the spectrum. Mm-hmm. But going through that helped me get through all the hard stuff, like being sport, playing with playing sports and all that just helped me. When you say your school wasn't good, was it because like a lack, a lack of money? Because where I'm from. Not a lack of money, just like a lack of like, uh, <clears throat> I would say wanting to teach the students. Give, that's, a, that's a huge thing. It's like teachers that give a shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they didn't really like, there was a few, like two or three that care. The rest yeah. just were no there money, for extra money. Yeah. No mm-hmm. amount of money can. Because like when I think back to, get, like, I mean, no, no, 
obviously money would make you do better in your job, but no amount of money the school has mm-hmm. would give a teacher who's making the same amount of money have that put that effort in to make a kid's experience better. Yeah, there's like a level of give a fuckness you have to have to want to instill lessons into a kid. But there's also environments. Like, if there's an environment where there's a lot of good teachers, good-hearted people who want to help children, then chances Elms are... College. Chances are you... Shout out Elms College. <laughs> <laughs> Um, chances are if you start working on, working there, you're going to pick up on that positive energy and do mm-hmm. the same thing and try and make the same impact. And it also goes the same direction negatively as if you're in a sh- not good school where all the teachers don't give a fuck and they're lazy and whatever. You're also going to follow that trend. And that goes very similarly to teams, to other mm-hmm. environments. That's very just like a transversal thing. It's energy is contagious, yeah. positive and negative. I'm just asking about the money thing because when I think back to my middle school thing, one, I did get bullied. Um, and we didn't have there, it wasn't like we were broker by any means but it, there would be new basketballs and new soccer balls coming every single year and everyone would be like hyped as shit for that and like we had I don't even think we had like a mechanical pencil sharpeners like, we were like pretty, pretty fucking broke but do you think that's the reason why your school sucks Because you like, you, I don't you think my school sucks I, I think honestly the schools that have less money the teachers give more shit I was about to say that is, I don't think my school sucked I think the I think I had a lot of great experiences and I think that the the, partly the kids that I was around made the environment what it was because we yeah. tormented the living fuck out of the teachers. <laughs> like the living fuck. Yeah, I went that to a lot with me. I went to a private school for grades up until seventh grade and eighth grade until public school. Mm-hmm. The private school obviously had way more facilities, way more money. The teachers made way more money than uh, public school. Mm-hmm. In, in the U.S., not, no, I know it's not how it works. The public school teachers make way more than private school. But in, yeah, that's, because private that's schools... That's weird. Private schools in the U.S., a, you don't have to have a teaching degree. What? If you, did, if you didn't know that. At a private school, at least high school, you don't have to have, teach, you have, to have a college degree, but you don't have to have a teaching degree. You don't okay. have a master's in teaching. But in Canada, you do have to teach any, like that. Yeah. And private school, there's no board. There's no board. So the private school can, it can independently because pay. Because it's a private institution. Private it's, not, institution. it's not government. Public, there's a board, so the standard. Mm-hmm. But in the U.S., that's how it is in the U.S. But in Canada, there's also a board for private school. So private school teachers make more money, mm-hmm. I think. I think that's how it works. So where are you going but with this? What I'm going with this is that I went to a private school with a lot of money where I got a terrible education because none of the teachers gave a shit. They all were like bratty. They all like didn't give a fuck. They had yeah. no tolerance for anybody who was learning or going through anything or any childhood. Obviously, you're not going to have a fucking straight arrow child kid. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's learning through things, going through life. And when I went to this public school where all the teachers were way more inviting and way more like just gave a shit and wanted you to learn and develop you as a child, even though they had way less money. So it's not always about the money. That Could there be some level of job security there too? Because you're, would you be more secure in a private school or less? Less. Less? Less secure because it's an individual institution. You're covered by the board, it's a union. Would there be motivation for like getting kids to pass? Because I know that during I high think school. May, I mean, maybe they were just dealing with um, like bratty Jewish kids. Because it, <laughs> it was a Jewish private school. Uh-huh. And so uh, shout out Leo Beck. But... That could be what it is, and the teachers, but they just had no tolerance, and it was like, mm-hmm. they, I mean, they had all, all, it wasn't a financial issue why it was asked, it was a, teachers didn't give a shit. But one time I got kicked out of French class for two weeks. I went on a Monday, and it was like, you're not allowed back. I didn't even do anything. I didn't even do anything. It's like, you're, you're going to do your work in this, this private room with, not one-on-one actually. with the teacher until in two weeks. You know what's crazy is I remember we tormented a, the music teacher so bad <laughs> that she quit our class. Like She went to the principal and said, I can't teach this class. I need to switch because I'm going to have a mental breakdown. We, were, we would be in the back, me and my four boys, I have still boys with today, we would be in the back with trombones, and you know the spit, the spit valve? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> we would fill that shit to the brim all class, and then at the end of the class, we'd just empty it at the bottom. <laughs> and we'd be in the back with the trombones, and because you can talk through a trombone, so we'd be saying swear words to the trombone, and just go, fuck you, and just like just stupid shit like that all the time. We didn't want to learn a fucking like. That's kind of a cool, I'm about to go off the, off the river here, mm. as, what do you call it, but that's kind of a cool thing to think about now I'm thinking about it, is like, no amount of money can give you that type of effort. Like, you even see guys in the basketball who go to the league, mm. like, the work ben is, Simmons. the work is going to show. If you really love it and you want to get better, it's going to show, and the money can't, the money isn't going to do that. Mm-hmm. Like, the mo- no, you go into the league, first overall pick, how many first overall picks are end up bust because they don't really love it. And the same thing, I guess, with teaching and all the other professions. It's like, no amount, no amount, you could be making millions of dollars a year, it can't make you love it, it can't make you put an effort, mm-hmm. you know? And people can smell that, too. For sure, for sure. Um, back to your fucking story, because we just went on a fucking tangent. <laughs> um, where were we? Middle school? Yeah. You're playing lacrosse through middle school. Are you, how, I don't know stats in lacrosse, but. Are you killing? Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, not really, because when I got there, the eighth graders were phenomenal. There was a seventh grader. You had a, you had a middle school lacrosse team? Yeah. 
That doesn't happen in Canada. It doesn't have a very many places, I don't think. I feel like lacrosse is a very niche sport. Mm -hmm. So you weren't killing it? Uh, not particularly. I'd be more of a guy who would catch it right on the crease and just put the ball in. Mm. Like you are now? No. <laughs> um, is there a point where things switched and you started killing and you started to see some serious progress in this board or no? Um, I think when I – so I had a lot of motivation going into my freshman year to play. I was so excited to play. Then COVID happened, and then I lost all – You were a freshman when COVID hit? Yeah. How old are you? I was 18. Okay, that works out mathematically. Go on. That's crazy. Why? What? I'm 21, so I was a, I was a, I was a senior when that shit hit. Yeah, or, I, was, yeah I was junior or senior. Junior. Junior. Yeah. How many, what are you? What grade are you right now? I'm a sophomore. You're a sophomore. Well, we're both old sophomore. We're both should be age wise juniors. Okay, because yeah, because. And you're probably turning 19. Same I'm turning 19. Place. in He May. just turned 21, and I'm turning 10 and 21 in two weeks. MGM Casino, watch out. I, I, know, I was. I swear to God, I was two steps behind you with that fucking line. <laughs> So uh, I'm gonna come rob that place. Well, no, well, honestly, I'm not robbed. <laughs> legally, I'm gonna take your money gambling. I'm taking your money legally. I was gonna I'm ask gonna you, I, you myself. know what's crazy is I was gonna ask him if he's gambled before, and then I realized he legally can't, so we can't even talk about that. I am not GTA. Yes. yes. Uh, ah, <laughs> that's my shit. Um, so uh, you, you were about to say uh, there was a point during your freshman year where shit switched, like you started. So yeah, freshman year I was so excited to play, and then COVID happened, and sophomore year I just like didn't want to do anything. Like I went from a Super hyperactive, wanted to do everything, kid, ready to do anything. Then COVID happened, didn't want to do anything but stay in my room and do nothing. And that's fat? it. Yeah, I think I gained 40 pounds over COVID. Damn. <laughs> this, might be a, this might be a personal question, and feel free to answer it to your level of comfort. But do you think that, well, obviously, like, being at home in the home environments that people had kind of, like, made or break their uh, COVID experience, I guess. Do you think that, like, what was going on in your home environment at the time? And how do you think that impacted your motivation levels to continue to play Um. So, COVID, as my parents were, as my stepdad and mom were getting divorced, COVID happened. So we moved into a new house. It was a new environment, new everything. And it was very different because we lived with him, I think. I was with him till I was, yeah. We were with him when I was eight. And then we, they got divorced when I was, I think, turning 14. Okay. So, so it was just was five years that consistently was, okay. with them. Those were like really important years of my life. But yeah, going that COVID just ruined my motivation for playing a lot of sports and just hanging out with people. And I was very like not wanting to talk to people. And you were just devouring Italian food and bread and pasta and no meatballs. candy and sugar. Just oh, that seems like you actually. Yeah. So you didn't want to go out and talk to people and you're very not shy. at all. I was like, I was just getting out of my, I I was always in my comfort zone, and I was starting to get out of it within. That doesn't eight seem years. like you at all. He gave a sixty minute, sixty second speech at the beginning of the year about OnlyFans in front of four hundred people, and we'll didn't, didn't flinch. So that threw me off. That like, yeah, I'm out of my comfort zone. No, but so I wasn't in my comfort zone in a tenth uh, grade. Mm -hmm. I was back in. I was like, okay, I don't want to do anything. Can't now. I'm now. I don't care what I say. Mm -hmm. I go around saying whatever I want. Which has gotten him in some trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little bit, just a little bit. But so when does that, how, how do you turn that around? How do you clearly? get nice as fuck is what he's trying to ask. Well, I was going to ask you how you get out of the comfort, the comfort zone thing where you, it was just, you clearly don't give a fuck now, so how did that happen? It was just not caring about what people give thought Give Chris some lessons. He's scared to talk to women. I'm just going to out me on the podcast. <laughs> I'm scared of women too, okay? Exactly. I don't like talking to women. They're, they're scary. Mm -hmm. But so I think it was just not caring about what people think of me or what they have to say to me, just doing my own thing and just don't let the haters come after you and don't let them. Is there a moment that like that kind of clicked for you or just progressively over time? So between, so 11th grade and 12th grade were probably my hardest years, especially during soccer because there was this kid who just. Played did, soccer too? Yeah. Okay. I played soccer, basketball, and lacrosse. You hooped? I play a little bit, yeah. I, I wasn't. I was, said he could dunk. I could. At that, one point, you could, or you. At one point, till I sprained my ankle. That's a different story. Do you have video evidence? He was going to the league before he sprained his ankle. Do you have video evidence? Not of dunking, and I have pictures of my ankle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have the aftermath. Wasn't doubting the ankle. <laughs> <laughs> I have the aftermath of what happened. Okay. So, over the course of two years, 
you, you completely decide to swipe this fucking whole thing. At what point? You said there was, was there a moment that something that switched? Yeah, so it was this kid who, so I kind of been bullied, but not really. This kid was just a dick to me for no reason. He just, like, did not like me. My mom had a secret said that she th- secretly thinks he's gay mm. and just ones. is like hates his life One so yeah that's something my mom would say yeah so he would just be a dick to me i think it was when i so i sprained my ankle junior year and i came back and he just did not like that i was so actually i was on jv first in the beginning of junior soccer. year for soccer yeah and i played and then we when when we made it to playoffs i came back and i took his spot Mm. On varsity. Oh, fuck that kid. Are you going to out his name right now? I'll censor it oh. if you want me to. Ryan Adams. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, Ryan. the whitest Adam. name of all time. <laughs> I don't think he's going to ever see this, but. Mm-hmm. No, nah, he's probably. Adam. Well, Adam. So he does. So he sees yeah. it. We'll no, we're him. not going to add him. Okay. <laughs> That's crazy. We'll tag him. I'm, I'm, you can't. He's if you been want. thinking about you. And, and Lucci's going to sleep with your girlfriend. Now what? <laughs> no. 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 Anyway, so that kid was bullying you, and then. Not really been... bullying me. It was just like he just kept saying. He was like, he would say stuff under his breath when I would do stuff. I mean, whenever I would do something wrong, everybody would scream at me. I was like the kid that people would just... A sick chicken? What? A sick chicken? Sure. Okay. But like, if I would like have a bad touch or a bad pass, I'd be like, come on, you can do it. Or like, you can't like... Like Shia LaBeouf. Like, <laughs> then you got your get back. Just like, yeah. And they just like shit on me for messing up. And I was like, I never liked being, I never liked being yelled at. It was always <laughs> like, my confidence would always go down. I'd always like go into a shell. I wouldn't, I would and always... taking his spot kind of reverse that? Taking his spot boosted my confidence. And I was like, that, I was like, you can't talk to me when I just took your spot after starting JV at the beginning of the year. Okay. But yeah, that probably spiked my confidence up. And I was like, okay, now I think I can do stuff. And I have more confidence in myself to do stuff and not less listen to what people have to say to me. So you're a soccer all-star. You could dunk on the court, but you're a, <laughs> but now you're a college lacrosse player. How do you get, like, how did you end up at Elms? Now, before the podcast, I asked him, and I said, like, do you have any other, or any other, because another, like, freshman who's doing really well, well right now is Nick on the volleyball team, who I have a Spanish class with. I was talking to him. He said he had a bunch of D2 offers, whatever, and he chose to come here, and he's killing. You're another freshman who's doing really, really well. So I, under my impression, I had, like, you had all, bunch of different author offers from other places and you had a good coach who was reputable whatever program started up here so you want to come but you told me that you didn't have any any offers you had no intention of playing lacrosse in college so how do you end up at Elms? so junior year was the best year we were gonna have i was supposed to be the starting one of the starting offensive mids that we we're gonna play but then i sprained my ankle and i didn't this, play this. that this in, is a notorious ankle injury? This is a notorious ankle injury. And I'm going to be asking for video evidence <laughs> after the podcast. <laughs> I have that pictures. Part of the story. I have pictures. We, we, of we, it. I believe you have pictures. So I sprained Wait, it. Before you go on, the fact that you're offering video evidence, this thing better be sideways, upside down, and purple because no one ever <laughs> offers, was, oh, I have evidence. I can happen. <laughs> it, was, it was so bad. I remember when, I, when it happened, one of my friends, he had to like carry me out like a. Like, a baby, a yeah, like that, just carrying me out, running. Sprained and then, ankles are worse than broken because they the ligaments don't heal. I sprained my ankles sick fucking times. You have to tell me. You, you the also choir. can't fucking jump, so yeah, that cares? doesn't affect I, you. You can't check me or bench more than me. Second one's true. <laughs> now, now it's like ah. No, it definitely is. After the cut, did you? We okay. We hopped on the fucking, uh, you know, the arm machine where you uh, the thing in the weight room. The dips. Yeah, he tried to hop on that because I was doing. I was saying like, I wonder if I can do my weight on this, and I put two twenty on and I did it. And then he hopped on. And he's like, I bet you I can do it too. He did two hundred, couldn't do it. One eighty, couldn't do it. One sixty, couldn't do it. That's oh. not true. Now you're dragging. Now you're dragging. Bro, you I could. just tried the two twenty. I didn't go keep going down. Yes, no, you really did. But you went to your weight and you couldn't do it. Bro, that's not true. We can you're do it after this. Crazy. We can do it after this if you want. Definitely could. Now you're, now you're playing with my name. That's crazy. Anyways, continue. If you can remember where you were. I know. I forgot what I was. Oh, um, about my ankles. So, yeah. I sprained my ankle, and I was out for basically the entire season. And as soon as I started coming back and was ready to play, I got COVID. Mm, damn. And oh, my coach. Oh, and that was the year that we won states. And I didn't get to play at all, and I was so sad. You didn't get to play at all because you had COVID? Yeah. I didn't get to play. I didn't play a single game, so I... Sprained my ankle. As soon as I started coming back, I was playing. I practiced like five times. Got COVID. Yeah. It was, was, how the fuck are we here? How, how are we here? How did you get here? So I played junior or senior year was probably my best lacrosse year ever. I dropped 67 points in only one season that I played. So that means you contributed to 67 goals? I had 
I think I, I has 52 goals and I think it was 10, assists. 15 assists, yeah. So you don't like to pass the rock very much? I do, but I would get the ball fed to me and I would score. Oh, okay. So He's the MPJ lacrosse. <laughs> so my coach... Is that high? Six, what's like... So 1,000 points is like a very big milestone. 1,000 points is like 100 points. Holy shit. Holy shit. You dropped half, more than half of that in so one like season? So if you dropped 100 points in your career... You'd get like a post on like your own post. Like you would get a, a post, banner. and you get like a signed, a signed ball or a signed stick. Yeah. Or whatever. Okay, so that's like a equivalent. Okay, wow. So, my coach, I loved my high school coach. He was amazing. He helped me find the love of lacrosse again. Every, nobody on that team your senior year. really liked him. Yeah, senior right. year. Nobody else really liked him, but he couldn't show his favoritism to me. But I knew I was his favorite, so he couldn't show it. So I was like, okay. So then. I was playing box in the winter, and I met Coach Cross there, not knowing it was Coach Cross what's, yet. What's you playing? Box lacrosse. It's like indoor lacrosse. Okay. It's like that. They have you heard of the NLL? Nope. National Lacrosse League. It's based in Canada. That makes us even more ignorant. So you were playing box. <laughs> so I was playing box. It was like a little box in one. <laughs> so it was a little league that my coach was set up, and I met Coach Cross there, and he was saying that he was starting a first year program. And I didn't know who he was. And then end of the year was coming around. I was just looking into getting colleges. I was probably going to go to MCLA just to go there. I was looking at Champlain. Not as playing just as a student? Not as playing lacrosse at all. I was just looking so you to had no offers? Conference. No, nothing. But you had no 67 offers. goals, which is, like, really good, but no schools offer you? Mm-hmm. How does that work? I think it was because I also school. didn't reach out. Yeah, that's probably a big one. you got to reach out to things. I just wasn't planning on playing. I was like, okay, I'll just play my senior year, how it goes, and I end up doing good. But then I just never reached out to any coaches or any schools about playing. So then I just talked to my coach, and he said he would talk to Coach Cross for me. And then Coach Cross went to one of my games, and he said, okay, I want to recruit you. And then I got an offer to Elms. And now he's a leading scorer of all time, for now. For now. Mm-hmm. So what is the differences between – College lacrosse and high school lacrosse because I'm extremely ignorant and I don't know. So high school lacrosse, I mean, it also depends on the teams you play against. We played in a valley league, and a valley league was, had pretty good teams like Long Meadow. Long Meadow's a really good high school team. They give out a bunch of D. They always are. They send a lot of kids to D1 schools and like high D2. Mm-hmm. So we played teams like them, and. It was, it's very different now. I wasn't expecting to actually play in here. I thought it was going to be me competing for a spot, maybe get like a few minutes and stuff like that. But it's very different. It's very more fast pace. Mm -hmm. Which which goes with your play style, right? Yeah, which goes with my play style because I like dodging and just running around the guys. Mm -hmm. But in high school, it was just like catch the ball, wait for all of our players to get on set, then we run our plays and there's no shot clock in high school. So, so it's like high school uh, basketball. So like there's a thing called a restraining box. Have you seen the field? There's like the restraining box, midfield. Okay, the yeah, box. box? Not really. But like kind of? Kind of. Okay. So the restraining box in high school, you had to just step in there. Then you could hold the ball for the rest of the game if you wanted so to. So it was like eight, three in the key. But no, someone could no three deck in the key. you. Someone could deck you or you could just, we could just literally just run the ball around the, the perimeter the entire time. So if you were up 1-0, you could win the game. Just by we could win the game by doing that. Unless you get laid out. Unless you get laid out or if the quarter ends and you have to win the faceoff again and do it. Crazy story, sidestepping quickly. One of my – so no shot clock in basketball. And we were playing this really good team. Um, this is when I was on Vaughn Panthers. And we – after the first quarter, we dribbled the ball out the second quarter, third quarter, and first half of the fourth quarter because they were sitting in the zone and would they refused to get out of the zone. And our best player stood at half court, like in between – Half court and out of bounds line, like just over half court in that corner, pounding the ball for 15 minutes of clock time straight. No shot clock. They didn't do anything. We ended up winning the game by like five. And the other coach was just sitting there silent. They did not get out of their zone for two and a half quarters. That's pansy shit, bro. What are we doing? Like, were you up five? So what was the final we're, score? We were probably up like, we were probably up, it was probably like 27 to like 15 or something like that. <laughs> we were up like, we were up like 
seven points, and then we kind of realized, like, oh, hold, slow down, slow down, slow down, and we dribbling, and they didn't come out of the zone, and then we just kept dribbling, and they didn't come out of the zone, and then we ended up, oh, everyone on the bench is laughing, <laughs> they're in their zone, they're like, what the fuck is going on? It's kind of crazy. What the fuck? Wait. Crazy. Oh, I just had a complete brain fart moment. So, their coach didn't think to adjust at all. Not until it was too late. <laughs> he was, like, sitting in his own. I think he was like, they'll shoot eventually, they'll shoot eventually, like, just slow the game down, whatever, they'll shoot eventually. Mm-hmm. Did not shoot eventually. <laughs> Inbound the ball, dribble it to that. It wasn't inbound Were the ball. Were they dog was, shit? No, it was so Oakville. Why? It was Oakville. So why? Like, they were really good. The Division one. It was yeah, like I know divi- Oakville like, is. Why? Like, at the time, both of us were Division one, like, the highest level uh-huh. in the entire province. And <clears throat> why? They were sitting in the zone, and they would, they... I don't know if the coach was a pride thing. Like, he wouldn't want to get out of his principles or whatever. going to live or die by the fucking zone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it wasn't like inbound the ball, dribble the half court, inbound the ball, dribble the half court. It was like yeah. one time yeah. inbound the ball, one time dribble the half court, and the rest of the 15 minutes stand in place and pound the ball. That's depressing. That's it was so crazy. Cool. And then eventually they started like get out, like jab at it, but then like just pass it and then kept mm-hmm. dribbling. It was like it so was crazy. After the COVID thing, are you putting work in for the cross or did right you right now? No, no, no. After your COVID hit, not you really. I didn't really put in work. I just when the season came around, I played. So you're just very nice. You are you are very nice and talented. Yeah. I was. I've always been just an athletic kid, mm-hmm. like in eighth Until grade. You rolled your ankle. No, <laughs> like in eighth grade, every single morning and every single lunch, we'd always play football, and I'd always be the kid they, that the quarterback would throw it to because I'd just be jumping up, mm-hmm. catching one hand, just stuff like that. I've always been athletic. I just have never like been really good at one thing unless I actually just dedicated my time to it, and that's what I did coming here. So, what is it about lacrosse opposed to basketball? Baseball, all the ones that appeals to you. Um, so, I don't really know the word for it, but it's more the people, like the coaches. Like the coaches knew the players' parents, mm-hmm. and they would play them over p- kids who would actually put in the work. Oh, I was about to say, without the putting the work part, that sounds like favoritism. It is. But they, they would the they would play other kids over. Like last game when I this was. 10th grade when we played basketball. This was my last year ever playing basketball. We, it was the last game. I didn't play the entire game. There was 30 seconds left. We were up like 20. I didn't get put until 15 seconds left. (laughs) And we were up 20 from pretty much the entire game. Okay. And I wasn't put in. So that's why you just like fuck basketball. And I was like, I can't do this because our point guard was not good. He would dribble. He would get the ball stolen from every, almost every single time. It was Awful! I hated it. What position did you play in basketball? I played point guard and shooting guard. So you think you would have been a better point guard than the one that was playing? One hundred percent. I was always good at dribbling till I stopped playing. Okay. You should come to open runs. No, I'd get destroyed. <laughs> I'm not trying to self awareness, especially during the lacrosse season. No. Okay. So one thing I kind of want to know is I asked Connor the same question, um, and the name of the team is Spacing. But you you lost to them. You were up three zero in the first like two Regis. minutes. Regis. <sighs> How did that game go down? How did you end up losing the 5-1 lead? And why did that happen from your perspective as a player on the lacrosse team? Our team, when we're up a little, like a few goals by like what what I've seen this year is because we're a new team, everybody wants to score. And everybody wants to get their goal and have their goal in the record book. But that doesn't work against a team who can just – keep getting the ball if we just keep trying to run through every single person. Mm-hmm. Like, there was a few plays where we had a timeout. We said, let's not play hero ball. And then someone comes and takes the ball and runs through seven people and then just gets hammered. And I'm like, we can't do that. We, don't, we say don't play hero ball, and then we play hero ball. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason you lost? Mainly that, and we just had trouble running our offense because everybody – Everybody wanted to get their, like I said, everybody wanted to get their goal. Everybody wanted to be part of it. But that's not how you be a good team. It sounds like there's a lot of similarities between cross, obviously basketball, and a lot of sports. What do you think are, like, some important aspects that, like, make a good team? Because you've played a bunch of different sports. You've said you were on a national or a state champion team in lacrosse. You, you, although you didn't play, you were around the same team. And you also played basketball. You played soccer. You played baseball. I've, like, you've played around a lot of teams. What are things that make a good team? Teamwork. Like, there could be a lot of talent. Like, you could go against a team with a bunch of kids who are really good, but they don't work together. Is that Dean team good? That you're talking Dean about? is very good. They're very so it's good. not just those two brothers that are good. They are, but they are their main scorers. 
but they are good. Okay. So so what, I was going to use that as an example of a team that has. I was going to use St. Joe's as a team. What make? I was going to ask what differentiates St. Joe's from you guys. They are very experienced. Their entire starting lineup is grad students and seniors, so mm-hmm. they have been playing for four years in the college level before we even even stepped on a college field. Mm-hmm. So going against them, we knew it was going to be tough because we've never played at that college level, especially against kids who are 23, 24, running with their full body into us, knowing when to check us, when just it was it was not fun going against them. Mm. Um, what are your goals for the team and for yourself in the next three years of college? Three years. I hope we win the GNAC championship at least once. I think we can win a junior year. Okay. If our coach has a good recruiting class, and the goal for me is just, I'd say just get better. I mean, I don't expect to do anything afterwards. Maybe coach for like my high school team or help there, but I just want to get through college, get a degree, and just have fun playing lacrosse because I love the sport so much. Just leave it all in the field. Yeah, I just want to. Put my pour my heart out for everything for is the there sport. Pro lacrosse, there is yeah PLO. How do you go or in? yeah, it is the PLO. Pretty little lives. Um, how do you <laughs> shut up, Chris? How do you how, how do you go about playing pro lacrosse? Because with basketball, what has to happen is, is you have to have a pretty valid high school career. Then you have to get an, or not high school a college career, and then you have to get an agent, yeah. and then you have to go usually to Europe, but anywhere overseas is a valid situation to be in and then you have to get either you either get like half your shit paid or all of your shit paid and then you go play basketball i don't necessarily know how it works but you could play professional at any division it's a professional who's division three mm-hmm. or he, I mean, tc he was here division three and he was a professional mm-hmm. like tc debatably he's michael pro from here so like yeah you i with lacrosse it so Normally with basketball, they play one year and then they go mm-hmm. to NBA or whatever. But for lacrosse, they try to play all four. They play all four and get as much experience as they can before they go. It's a very physical sport too, right? It's, so it's all physical. about developing your body. And yeah. And like if, they, if one kid just went from freshman year of college to professional, professional it would not work out. All They need those four years of experience. Are you in the weight room? Is your guys' team in the weight room? Not as much as we should be. There are Nikki and Jesse, Tobin and Colin are the main ones who are in there. I was about to say, Nikki and Jesse are always in I want to get in there more. I just haven't had the drive to lately. Mm. And I want to. I want to get back in there because I need to. I want to say get in the weight room, but I also want to say fuck off because if I'm in there and there's already 30 people in there, we don't need another person. <laughs> well, they're redoing the weight room, so it's going to be bigger, so they'll have more space. Yeah, I, I heard they were get rid of, getting rid of the pool. And making the well, it doesn't affect bigger. my life at fucking like, all. So well, I the, don't the care. Whole, like they're making the whole like the pool area a bigger weight room. That's what I heard like, they were doing. Like there was rumors around. That's what I've heard they know. said they were going to do. They were doing something. Morgan was talking about the other day, but I didn't really pay, tune in. I probably should have. I don't know, but that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, so a piece of it, I one question I wanted to ask you is like I feel like like what you went through in your childhood is relatable to an audience out there, and you've obviously made it on the out other side of it and have a positive outlook and kind of using that, your experience to help you find other pathways to give you an outlet. So do you have any piece of advice for anybody that's going through a type of childhood like you had? Um, I would say find something that'll help you get through it. Like religion helped me. Find, I would just say find something that'll help you get through it no matter what. Find Channel something. Energy energy. Yeah, like religion helped me. And I just think that if you just find something that can help you get through everything, no matter what, just something that you can just always rely on, always believe in, that'll it'll help you get through is it. Is lacrosse that for you as well? Lacrosse is that for me too, yeah. Lacrosse is literally my life now. And it's I don't know where I would be without lacrosse. Do you think... I was going to ask that. Do you think your life would be drastically different if you didn't have lacrosse? I think so, yeah. I think if I stayed with baseball... I probably would be playing co- either be playing baseball in college, basketball, or nothing at all. You could have been Melvin's teammate. <laughs> <laughs> no um, comment. Um, one of the things I was going to ask 
I almost want to ask his question, but before I do that, I did want to ask something else. I don't know why I'm tweaking on it right now. Um, fuck it. I'm going to try and ask his question, and then I'll come back to it. Do you think you have an answer for this yet, or have you thought about it? Just ask y'all. Okay. Who's the biggest role model in your life that's helped you get to where you are? I think my coach, my high school coach for lacrosse. He, no matter what I was going through, he was always there. Like, he would always ask every single winter. He's like, are you coming to box? I'd be like, I don't know, coach. I, I have basketball. He's like, if you ever have time, text me. We can go and shoot if you want. We can work on some stuff. Um, even when I came here, he said, I'm so proud of you. I can't believe you've grown like this. I've always knew you can. And if you ever need some money to just help you, let me know. And I'm like, thanks, coach. I don't really need the money, but I know you're always there for me. So That's awesome. That's I'll wild. look. Um, Shout out, coach. What's his name? Shout coach O'Neill. Shout out, coach O'Neill. Fucking right. What kind of lessons, or if is there any lessons that he taught you using the cross that you've applied in real life? Um, team player, and that I guess could be like not everything is about you and. You don't have to go through things alone. There's always going to be someone who's either gone through the same stuff as you or is going through the same stuff as you. And I feel like the the reason you go through certain stuff is so you can either help someone in the future or someone can help you as you're going through that thing. Outside of basketball, or not basketball, outside of lacrosse, what is your major? I'm a computer science major. I did would not have yeah, guessed that at all. Um, nobody thinks I'm a computer science major. <laughs> it's not... Why computer science? So... When I get out of college, I want to animate movies, like, you know, like, cars, like, animation like that. Yeah. Stuff okay. like that. Or, like, that's really cool, actually. video games animation or, like, you know, the new Godzilla movie that's coming out, like, real-life animation like that. It's just, I, that's something that, that's Do you been, have experience in that? Like, do you have uh, any classes here where you've had, that's just something like... That's just like, something that's, like, for the past six, seven years, I've been like, okay, I wanted to, like, my therapist showed me stuff like that. I was like... That seems really interesting, and I've just been doing a bunch of research. That's dope. On we talked about having a therapist on the on the podcast before because I speak to a therapist as well. Yeah. Kind of as I need to more during the basketball season. Uh, is she giving you any like strategies that she or he or she or he? Mine's a girl. But. Yeah. So. I, medicine. That's one thing that helped sort of with like everything. Mm-hmm. I was my mom was always against medicine and never liked it, but she always she like recommended it and said you can try it. And that has helped my life significantly because I have severe ADHD. Okay. So that sort of helps it and helps me get through, like, most of my days mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have classes with Goose because you're a computer science major? Who? Goose. Ponytail. Goose Goslin? No, I don't think so. Oh, that's awkward. Maybe uh, not yet. He's only a freshman. Yeah. It is true. So he maybe takes more upper class. Um, the only other thing left I have is what is it like to be roommates with Declan and how many controllers have you seen smashed he's okay I, I know everybody <laughs> like yeah he's an, he, he can be he can be annoying sometimes but I can be annoying as well he's not the only one that has smashed controllers I used to smash controllers in my days you guys are a match man in heaven yeah wait did you smash it over Rocket League Rocket League Fortnite <laughs> and like I sm- like I was talking to him before. I did. Uh, see, how play, I, see how he played Fortnite? I, I, did, I did Fortnite tournaments during COVID. I, was, I like, said, you think you're better like, than Chris? I said, like, you think you're better than cash Chris? Cash tournaments, yeah. I, I won two grand one time. Yeah, he's probably better than me. I'm, I'm not anymore. Suck. I'm awful now. I'm awful. I haven't played in like six months. I'm not terrible now. I got a crowned up today. Like, I try, to get, a, I try to get a win I'm today. I'm awful now. It's probably 10 times better than you. I don't think so. I'm actually pretty nice. Like, if you look at someone like You'll probably beat me. You'll probably beat me. Hell no. You look at someone like Melvin, who has also actively won money in tournaments. When we were in his room just dicking around with the thing, he's like, bro, you're actually kind of nice at this. I think you underestimate. Like, I'm actually pretty fucking nice at Fortnite. Bro, but that's the difference between a professional and a recreational. I wasn't a professional. Like, I wasn't. Just because you won money doesn't mean you're it was just, it was just like, what's the definition of professional? Someone who spends a, we did, the, we literally just find this on the, this podcast, that it's someone, it's something that takes up more than 10 hours of their life on a daily basis. do that? I think it might have been either outside of the podcast or after the podcast, but we talked about this. And, and it, I was on the same side of the argument that I'm on now. I don't I think so. I think, you were on my, I think you were on the other side. Really? Yeah. Because you said that just because someone makes money off something, doesn't like, there's people who suck at stuff who make money at it. Yeah, like there's streamers who well, aren't. I guess Devontae Freak is not a professional basketball player. And there's Destroying, who wasn't a professional. Now he has, but he made money off playing football. Like, destroying? Not clicking. 
You don't know that. You don't know the, that football YouTuber destroying. Look, look him up over the podcast. Okay. Um, I think we have the last question. Yeah, we can. I think we can wrap it up here. What's uh, one piece of advice you could would give to your younger self? Maybe it's when you're COVID. Maybe it's when you're going through stuff when you're younger. But obviously now you're in a better place and you have kind of a passion and direction and kind of what's one thing that you've learned that you'd share with your younger self who's going through something. If I could say one thing to my younger self, it'd probably be just no matter what you're going through, you're going to get through it. Just have a level head. Just don't think you're not going to get through it because there's always going to be someone who can help you whether it's your mom, if it's a friend, a girlfriend, a grandma, a brother, whatever. Someone is always going to be there for you and helping you get through whatever you go through. So I just say keep a level head. Don't let anything stop you no matter what. And just keep going. Push through everything you're going through. Awesome. That's all I got. Thank you for coming on, my boy. That's episode three.